One of the things that the law of Moses provided for was that if you were harvesting a field, you had to leave some behind. You were not supposed to harvest all of it. And if you drop some on the ground, you had to leave it there. Why? So that poor people could come along and harvest what was left or pick up what you had dropped. And that's what Ruth is doing in Ruth chapter two, along with the other poor people of Bethlehem. They're not begging because they're working, but they're following along behind those who are harvesting on behalf of the landowner. The landowner is Boaz. And Boaz, we find, when he comes and sees his workers, he says, the Lord be with you to them. Yahweh is the word he uses, which is the name of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of Moses. And he is following the Mosaic law by allowing the poor people to glean the harvest behind those who are working for him. And he becomes aware of Ruth. And this shows promise. We find out that Boaz is somehow related to Naomi. And there is promise in the future, which we come upon in the next few chapters. In the gospel, we have Joseph of Arimathea, who begs Pilate for the body of Jesus. And we are told of Joseph that he was a member of the council, the Sanhedrin. And yet, as one of the leaders of the Jewish people, he was looking for the kingdom of God. I would say that he's like Boaz in that sense. He's expecting a further manifestation of God's presence. He's not just self-righteous and religious in the way the scribes and Pharisees were who have just killed Jesus. He's religious in the sense that he's looking for the kingdom of God. He is living his life with the expectation that somehow God's presence will be revealed in the world and in his life. It harkens back to, in another gospel, Simeon at the presentation of Jesus. Uh, when Joseph and Mary bring Jesus to the temple, and Simeon, we are told, has been waiting for the consolation of Israel. Always at the temple, waiting in, with this expectation that fidelity to God is matched by a mysterious fidelity of God to us. Actually, God's fidelity, of course, comes first, but that our response to it is a response of expectation. And there's a graciousness involved. God's grace is offered and we graciously respond by, in the case of Boaz, being kind to his own workers and being uh, indulgent with Ruth and the poor people in the case of Joseph of Arimathea, actually and bravely asking for the body of this so-called criminal who has just been executed. And with Simeon in the Gospel of Luke, recognizing baby Jesus as the Messiah because he has been waiting for the consolation of Israel. So these characters follow the law of Moses. They behave righteously. And even Ruth, who has not been raised believing in Yahweh, the God of the Jews, these people are open to him and their righteousness is not the righteousness or the self-righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. Their righteousness is a righteousness of trust and fidelity and expectation. That I think is the lesson we learn from today's readings.